With your permission, Lord Jesus, truly present in the Blessed Sacrament, I have uh, have a big day coming up, as many of you are aware, 16 days uh, until I'm ordained a priest. And it's got me thinking a lot about the world, a lot about uh, the priesthood, a lot about the role of Jesus in this world. Where does Jesus belong in this world? And I'm, I'm reading a book, and it's on our culture, and it said this. It said, we are living in a culture which communicates that nobody is responsible and everyone is a victim and that forces beyond our control are overwhelming our will and determining our actions. So we are not really responsible. That got me thinking. I remember hearing this before, and it was a couple years ago, more than a couple years ago, but not too long. I remember listening to a Matthew Kelly CD, of all things, and he said, 70% of Catholics don't attend weekly Mass. And 6.5% of parishioners perform 80% of the volunteer activities in the church. And he followed that up with this. Society is suffering through the age of the abdication of responsibility. These thoughts, they came to my mind as I began to think of the St. James Mission, which really is the mission of the entire church. Be disciples, make disciples. And that's no mere tagline. That's our responsibility as Christians. It's our vocation for each and every one of us. It's our vocation given us by Jesus Christ at our baptism. The last thing that Jesus said to the disciples in Matthew's gospel, Matthew 28, he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. As baptized, we are commissioned to call others to baptism, to a greater relationship with Christ. And Jesus is with us always, here with us, teaching us, observing us, encouraging us until the end of the age. You see, be disciples, make disciples, it's no mere suggestion. It's our call and our duty as Christians. And Christ here on the altar tonight beckons us to bring others to him just as clearly as he did on that hilltop in Galilee 2,000 years ago. If there are 100 souls that don't know Christ, we want those 100. If there are 100 souls that don't love Christ, we want those 100. We want each of those 100 for Christ. Allow your horizons to grow bigger and broader. Allow your hearts to expand more and more to be disciples, to love Christ and to make disciples, which is bringing Christ into the lives of those around us and bringing others to love Christ as well. This is what it's all about. This is the Christian life. This is each of our vocations. And the Lord tonight is here, truly present on the altar, and ask him tonight to allow your horizons to grow and your heart to expand, to grow more in love with him, but also to grow more in love with those who don't know him and introduce the two. I'm going to make a couple suggestions, and it's going to sound odd. And you might even be tempted to call Father Ryan and tell him I'm off my rocker, or worse, the Cardinal, and tell him I'm really out of my mind. But here goes. One, 
be proud. Be proud. And two, be selfish. Be very selfish. Pride is, is one of the seven deadly sins, and it's usually considered the primary and the most serious of the deadly sins. So what the heck has gotten into me? And selfishness. Selfishness runs like a streak through each of the other seven deadlies. So what the heck am I talking about? Be proud. Here goes. Be proud that God, the Father of heaven and earth, the Father of all things, is your Father. The Father who made the stars in heaven, the great vastness of our earth, is your Father. We should be proud to have such a loving and doting Father in our Lord. Let's do all that we do on earth with the realization that God is our loving Father. And let everything shine through with that realization. Let's let our work, our families, and our lives reflect the realization that God is our Father. All we do in our homes, at our office, in our neighborhoods, everywhere, can and should reflect the intimacy of that filial relationship. God is our Father. Share your pride in being a son and daughter of God our Father with others. Know that he loves you unconditionally and don't hide your Father and don't hide your love for him. Be selfish. <laughs> Be selfish with your time be selfish with your time spent with God. Be selfish with your time spent with our Eucharistic Lord. Nourish and cherish that time spent with the Lord. It's a precious thing. And if we time, cherish our time spent with our Eucharistic Lord, you will have the strength and the magnanimity to elevate your soul and open your heart to him. Have a healthy selfishness for time spent with Christ. And time spent with him is precious and will strengthen you to be the person that the Lord calls you to be. Be selfish of that time. Be selfish of that time spent with Christ and you will have the strength to live out the vocation that he called you to in your vocation. Without time, without time spent with Jesus, you won't be making disciples because you won't be one. We need that time. Cherish it. Be selfish with those moments spent with our Lord. This upcoming Sunday's gospel tells us to remain in Christ. Jesus says, I am the vine and the Father is the vine grower. This gospel also talks of pruning and this beautiful imagery. And we are nurtured by Jesus and with careful pruning, we'll bear great fruit. So with the intimacy of our relationship with God, our Father, with that healthy selfishness of time spent with him, let's prune those things from our lives that keep us from God. There may have been some complacency or abdication of responsibility, whatever it may be. But we can prune those things from our lives to bear great fruit in our relationship with our Lord, in our relationship with those whom we love, and those whom we've yet to even know, those 100 that have yet to know Christ and love him, those whom we are called to bring to Christ. As a church, we can move beyond you know, the reality of the decline that's been going on for so long in our church. Long before COVID-19, we were in trouble as a church because people were leaving in droves 
They didn't know Christ. They didn't recognize him in the Eucharist. They didn't recognize him in their lives. And as we continue to open up, recover from this COVID-19 pandemic, how many of the people that found life so convenient without Christ or without the church will return? It's a question that nags me. Mass on TV or a live stream is a perfect alternative for such a terrible crisis, but it doesn't provide the Eucharist and it doesn't provide that sacred space the way that this beautiful church does. Christ truly present on the altar now and always present in this tabernacle beckons for each and every one of us here and now. But he also beckons for each person in this world who doesn't yet know him. And it's our vocation to make that introduction. It's our responsibility. Be disciples, make disciples. It's our vocation as baptized Christians. It's our responsibility. Be proud of your extraordinarily generous and gracious Father, our Lord. Cultivate that relationship with him. Share your love with him, with others. Be selfish of the time spent with him. Trust me, you need it. I need it. We all need it. We all need that time spent with our Lord. We need that intimacy. Let's love Jesus Christ and prune those things from our lives that keep us from him. And as a church, let's recognize that our Eucharistic Lord beckons us. He calls for us. Let's respond to that call. And he'll make saints of us in the end.